Hey, good day everyone, welcome to Overland Journals. My name is Duncan. If you're new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. My channel is all about sharing my experiences in overlanding with the rest of the community and learning from everybody else as well. Because you live and learn, as I always say. Now hit that notification button because I try and bring a video out every single week. In this video, I want to talk about the DC to DC charger I'm going to be installing in my 4B. Welcome back everyone. All right, if you're running a dual battery system where you've got a cranking battery and a deep cycle battery, then a DC to DC charger is something I feel is essential because a DC to DC charger will make sure both batteries, uh, it doesn't matter what type of batteries they are, the DC to DC charger will make sure those two batteries are kept charged optimally all the time. Now, I've been wanting to put a DC to DC charger into my 4B for a while, but I took my time because I wanted to do some research, make sure I found a product which was which needed uh, which suited my needs at the same time fitted into my budget. So I eventually came across this product. It's called um, it's, it's from a company called Interval or brand is called Intervolt, and uh, I think it comes out of Western Australia. It's an Aussie product, so I love supporting local companies, and uh, it it operates up to 50 degrees centigrade ambient it'll still give a hundred percent charge so that's pretty neat and then even up at high as 85 degrees centigrade ambient it'll give up to 20 percent charge so that's a very wide um, range of temperature you can work with i don't see how i'm going to go up to 85 degrees but that's pretty good for the product also something else i really liked about it was it comes with a it's fully sealed unit so it comes with a rating of ip67 what that means is if i was doing a river crossing and somehow water got into my engine bay or got splashed or whatever this unit will not be affected because it's fully sealed so that's pretty neat so this is what i'm going to get installed in my 80 series so currently in my 80 series i've got a dual battery setup so out of the camera's frame at that end i've got my cranking battery the main battery and over here I've got my deep cycle battery which supplies power to all my accessories so like my fridges, the um, floodlights I've got at the back for camp setups and so on all go off this. Now managing these two batteries is a very simple, um, it's not even a battery manager, I cannot call it that, it's simply a solenoid which distributes the power coming out of the alternator between the two batteries so it's kind of equally distributes the power coming out of the alternator and also when I switch off the engine, it isolates the main battery so that all the accessories will draw power only from this one. So the chances of me running the main battery or the cranking battery down is completely eliminated when the engine is switched off. So that's pretty, pretty good and it's worked for me pretty well all this time. But um, this is not good enough because of the way the two batteries are. And I'll explain that. The, the cranking battery is designed to take a quick charge and that's because it also delivers a quick discharge when, a, when the cranking, all that amperage for cranking is required. So that's fine, that works, That, but then for accessories, which for example when you switch off at the ev in the evening at a campsite and you want to run your fridge right through, perhaps maybe you want to run a few um, camping lights while you set up camp or whatever or do some cooking, then you need a deep cycle battery which will supply a long enough power for a number of number of hours so deep cycle batteries are designed to take a slow charge slow long charge but at the same time it, it delivers a slow long discharge so these are these two batteries are completely different types of batteries but the problem here is that when the the way the alternator is designed um, the alternator de delivers enough power to bring the cranking battery to its optimum and that doesn't necessarily mean that is sufficient to get the crank or uh, the deep cycle battery which is 130 watt 30 amp hour battery that i've got reaches maximum 
or optimum capacity. That's just the way it is designed. So from it comes out of the factory, that's how it is. And this unit here does not dif differentiate between the two different types of batteries. It just makes sure it's the supply coming from the alternate is evenly distributed. That's it. So this is where the importance of a DC to DC charger comes in. So with the DC to DC charger, it basically makes sure both batteries, the two different types of batteries, receives enough supply of power to get them both equally or optimally charged. I'm off to Opposite Lock at Windsor Gardens. Now I'm not sponsored by Opposite Lock, but I, I get all my accessories from them. I enjoy the guys there. They're really friendly, good bunch of blokes. So I'm off to Opposite Lock to get my DC to DC charger installed. Okay, I just got back from opposite lock and I've got my DC to DC in, um, charger installed. So here's the unit. It's a little unit here. In the, so if you could remember from a little earlier in my video, I had the solenoid installed here. That's come off now. And instead of that, that's the DC to DC charger installed. So they've done a pretty neat job. So pretty pleased with that. And um, basically what this now does is it gives my auxiliary battery uh, the amount of charging it needs as a deep cycle battery and it once the battery is reached its optimum then it just goes to a maintenance mode and depending on how much draw it'll work accordingly so rather than just pumping as much amps as it, a unit can this will actually maintain and regulate the amount of amps being sent into the auxiliary battery just to keep it optimum now also at the same time this can take in a solar input and that's been installed right here so that's an anderson plug so if i got a solar blanket or a solar panel just plug it in there and it's got solar sub supply into this unit and then the unit will decide how it's going to distribute that power and to keep this battery charged so it's pretty neat now on the inside i've got an lcd panel that gives me certain information which helps me to figure out how the batteries are doing so let's go and take a look at that here's the uh, little lcd display that comes with the dc to dc charger you can uh, have it installed just about anywhere on the dashboard that's convenient to you in my case i have it tucked away neatly next to the gear lever and it's kind of facing upward so i can at a glance as i'm driving take a look at it if i wanted to now what this is telling me at the moment is that my auxiliary battery is at 13.2 volts and the DC to DC charger is pumping in 0.6 amps because that's all it needs at this point for it to be kept uh, at optimum capacity. And the little icon at the top here which is which looks like a cell phone signal indicator what that tells me is that my auxiliary battery is full. It's, um, it's on a full charge and the DC to DC charger is just giving it a little bit of amperage just to keep it um, topped up. Now if I toggle the switch here, then that tells me the top readout is the amount of volts in my auxiliary battery and the bottom readout which is the 14.5 is my main battery's volt re voltage. Quickly before I finish this video, I'll, talk, I'll just mention how I work out what I can get out of my deep cycle battery. Now usually deep cycle batteries, and I'm talking about the traditional batteries, the lead acid or AGM batteries, they come with a rating and the ratings usually would be 100 amp hours or 120 amp hours and so on. So what that theoretically means is, so if it says 100 amp hour, theoretically what that means is that at a draw of one amp per hour, that battery can supply you with 100 hours of supply. But with the traditional batteries, what you've got to remember is it can only supply up to 50%. That's efficiently. Thereafter, it starts falling away and gets destroyed. And I touched on this a little earlier in the video. So ideally, with 100 amp hour, for example, you'll only get about 50 amp hours of supply. Now, I've worked out how, my, how much my system draws. So usually, when I, at the end of the day, when I get to a campsite, switch off the engine, I want my fridge running till the next morning. I may run a few LED floodlights, which I have installed around the 4B. I usually try not to because I carry a whole heap of LED lanterns, which are pre-charged, as well as I've got a few gas lanterns. So I try not to put too much load onto my system. But if I did switch on those lights, with the fridge running, I draw about four to five amps per hour. 
but once the lights get switched off which is usually after a few hours it's just a bad um, fridge so that draw drops down further so using that calculation I can get about 12 to 14 hours of supply out of my deep cycle battery and that's all I really need because come the next day I'll probably get back on the road engine gets started up and through the DC to DC charger my batteries will get charged up if I'm not moving I just plug in my solar blanket and that takes care of the charging so ideally that's that's what I'm looking at so that's kind of in a simple way to work out what a deep cycle battery um, can give you so if you are thinking of getting something installed Ideally, what would be good would be to work out what your draw would be once the engine switched off and then get a battery that can give you that supply for that many number of hours. So I hope you found this video useful. If you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe. Um, if you've got any comments, questions, or if you've got any of your experiences in a DC to DC charger, to share with me please do leave it in the comments below i'd love to hear from you guys and thanks for watching i'll see you next week in another video